I am Jesus. Like I said, it's not I am Jesus, Jesus lives in me. But the sermon series is called I Am Jesus. Now we finished the three parts of that sermon. Number one, we said I am the resurrection of the, you know, resurrection of the dead. And we finished on Easter Sunday. And now we did I am the good shepherd. And last week we did I am the light of the world. And the key thing that, that scriptures that we learned from book of John chapter 8, God was not only light of the world, he became the light of that woman who went through prostitution. And I believe the same thing, that God will become the light of your world. When God becomes the light of your world, now you gain, you're going to let, let see God, what God is going to do in your families, in your children, in your life, that the light of God will begin to flow. So today, most important sermon that I love this sermon that I've been meditating on is, by the way, there are seven I am's in the book of John, seven I am's. But this is going to be the fourth one. We're going to end this series. The next series is going to be Holy Spirit. If some of you are having questions about Holy Spirit, you want to learn about Holy Spirit, we're going to start next month, and it's going to be an awesome journey. I'm so excited to bring that out to you. But today is the last uh, I Am for the four-part series. It's called I Am the Vine. And before I'm going to jump into that, I want to welcome you. Is there anybody here the first time worshiping with us? If you don't mind, can I see your hand? So I just want to come. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Look at that. Look at that. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Oh, God bless you. God will use you. God will bless you. God will take you to another level. And thank you so much. And if you're here, you know, we love our guests and we model our services to honor our guests and respect our guests. And uh, I pray that this experience will be uh, pleasing to you and worshiping God. As you're walking out today, please to fill up the connection card and at least give us an email or phone number that works and so that we will keep in touch with you. We would not come to your home. You can take my word on that. Nobody from church will come and knock on your door until you ask us to pray. But we want to touch base with you and to let you know what God is doing. So on the way, as you're walking out, we have a compliment gift for you. And please do stop by at the uh, welcome table and you will get that compliment gift. It's you will be blessed as you experience that gift, and we want to thank you as being a part of this morning service and experience with us. And also, you know, if you're here, you're not familiar with the midweek services, we only do once a month on first to third of every month. Uh, experience. If you want to receive a prophetic word from God, if you want to receive a healing from God, if you want to experience a deeper word of God, you believe like, you know, sometimes, you know, we come to church in one hour, two hours, and you can't able to minister everything. So on first Thursday, we dedicate just for let the Holy Spirit flow in this room so that God can minister to you. God can heal you. God can deliver. So if you, if you want to receive a healing touch, deliverance touch, and also put the word, and I want, you, I want to invite you to be here every first Thursday starting, you know, we've been doing this since January, but this Thursday we will be here at 7 p.m. You know, after work, get off work, and just give a two hour and a half with God and come and worship God. Let's seek God. Let God give you something to you so that you can move on forward. Amen. And also we have a complimentary uh, uh, Wi-Fi here for one hour. You can go on WC and then you can select our, you know, our logo and then you know, you'll be able to access Wi-Fi. And so you can download our app and our sermon notes are in the app. So you can look at my sermon notes and just to follow and see if I'm preaching wrong so that you can be me a comment. Pastor, you're wrong on this scripture. I would love to receive a feedback. I'm not afraid of feedback. I'm not afraid of critics. I would not be here if I'm afraid of it, so please give me whatever you can. I'm ready to go forward next level. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap. We're so excited, guys. God is so good. So Jesus said, I am the wine. But let me show you the scripture before I'm going to jump into that. John chapter 15, verse 5, the beginning scripture of this. And it's very important, this chapter. But I'm going to tell you why it's very important. You see, I am the wine. It goes on to say, you are the branches. And if you remain in me, I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And don't look at me like I wrote this Bible. I did not write this Bible. <laughs> so the Lord gave us this Bible. We're following this instruction. But I highlighted some few words for us to kind of bring our stimulation and put a work to our thinking. That Jesus did not say, I was the wine. Did it did not say, I will become the wine. Did it did not say, I can be wine. Did Jesus said, I am the wine. What that means is, right now, right this moment, as you're sitting and listening to the word of God, Jesus 
Jesus is. Jesus is the wine. Jesus is the shepherd. Jesus is the door. Jesus is the light. Jesus is right now. So if you can embrace the truth, I am, now you begin to walk into the knowledge of God. Now you can tap into the knowledge of God, apply to your life, and you can walk out of your knowing that it doesn't matter what happens around me. Jesus is the wine. As long as I'm plugged into that wine, I can be the person that God has called us to be. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap if we can. And that's what the I am means. I am the wine. And he goes on to say, you are the branches. You are the branches. This is a very interesting subject to me because as a, as a, as a pastor, when I study scriptures, I go back to the previous chapter and after chapters. You know, John chapter 13, Jesus started off a last supper. That's when he ready to give up and ready to walk towards the destiny that God created. He walked away from this earth, give up on everything on this earthly things and start surrendering to his father's call. In John chapter 15, he made this statement. In John chapter 18, he was arrested. That tells us this scripture is a very vital to Jesus Christ. He made this statement as they're sitting there you know, kind of like eating the uh, last supper. You can imagine Jesus knew where he's going. The disciples have no idea, no clue what's going to happen. In the middle of that serious moment, the middle of all that motion that's going on in Jesus' heart, he speaks this scripture. He said, I am the wine. You are the branches. And he goes on to say, you will bear much fruit. If you remain. You know, some of us know there's a difference between if and when. If we don't eat, we will die. If we don't breathe, we will die. When we don't have a money, we can go get a job. So there's a difference between if. If in this scripture is a very important. If you and I don't remain in him. And he would not be in us. You see, a lot of times we think God should do something for me. But we don't see that it is starting with you and me. Come unto me, I will give you the rest. He did not say, I will give you the rest, then you come. Come unto me, I will give you the rest. And he said, seek me, you will find me. He didn't say, you, I'm just going to show up and then you seek me. So it's important for us to see if I am remaining in him, he in me. Some people ask me, Pastor, how are you always fired up for the word of God? And all? The, the key for my life is I choose to remain in him. I'm going to give you a secret for all of us. Don't tell anybody, okay? Don't put it in the Facebook. Don't give it in Twitter. Let me give you the secret to you. You ready for a secret? This is my secret. I learned very, with all my heart that this, I follow this. Any song that I listen, any TV show that I watch, any music that I listen, any church sermon I listen, any experience I go to, any basketball game I went to, anything, if they don't lead me close to Jesus today, then yesterday, I will say goodbye. Because if we are not led into Jesus you and I are led into religion. And you know, religion is as dangerous as death. But relationship is powerful as heaven. And you can, you can tell a man, you can speak to a man, and you know if that man has a relationship with Christ because you can feel the power that's coming upon from the heart because they have something about with the Jesus. They're so fired up because they know how to plug in. In Christ. So I learned that. Any song. It doesn't matter. Even Christian people sing a song. If that song doesn't take me to Jesus. I'll say ain't listening. Talk to the hand. Ta -da 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 -da. You can't touch this. <laughs> you know somebody look. Like, yeah that's me. You try to touch me. You better have a Jesus. If you don't have a Jesus. You can't touch me. It will help you, believe me. So you, you're focused on, there's a stuff in YouTube. How many watch YouTube clips? 
This talk about Illuminati, bologna, and sandwich, sausage, turkey, everything. They, you got to watch and learn one thing. Are they taking you to Jesus? If they don't, you're going to walk in an illusion that is so false. And you're living by yourself in the world thinking like, this America is going down. Who told you this America is going down? God said he's the author and the finisher of this country. This country will stay longer. That's the reason why God brought us here. And there's a blessing on this country. It doesn't matter what you speak. It, God is the one that's speaking word over this country. <laughs> so he's the king of this country, amen? But anyway, let me get back to my sermon. It's okay to have fun in the church, by the way. I know you go to sports game and you think girls fast gay. Girls fast gay. No, you're like looking like all holy and it's sanctified so holy. It's okay to laugh. I like to have a good time. I enjoy what I'm doing. Amen. Pray for Spurs, man. They're doing great. Yeah. They're doing great. They're, doing great. they're going to be kawa. It's going to be awesome. I want to believe they're going to get championship this year. I have one week that's... Some of, you, some of you are like, I can't believe you're talking in the church. Yeah, but you talk in your home. Anyway, let me get back to my business. All right. <laughs> so it's important for us to understand this word. You will bear much fruit, but I love the last portion of that scripture. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Have you ever defined nothing? Nothing means nothing. <laughs> you can do nothing apart from me. There is no life apart from it. So I'm going to ask you a few questions and I'm going to bring you the, the experience that we have here. Why is being connected important? It's important that you be being connected. Because if you're not connected, Bible says, look at John 15 verse 1. The Lord himself says, I am the true wine. My father is the gardener. In other words, Jesus is telling he is the true wine. Every time when Jesus say true, I want you to just kind of speculate with me if you can. When Jesus said, the true worshiper will worship my father in spirit and truth, what he's telling is there's a false worship that worship outside the spirit and truth. When he said, I am the true wine, he's also saying there's a false wine that we connect all through our lives. Thinking we're connecting to Jesus. Let me give you a demonstration. So this is the branch that I have. And, and, then, and then, you know, let's say you're walking around like this. You can see there's no life in this, right? Some of you see. And it's easy to burn this thing. I don't know if you guys know. It's easy. Even I was this morning, I was trying to, like, you know, bend something. So it pops really good. See, it comes out very easy. So it is easy to destroy. Enemy knows it. As soon as you're like this, I'm just going to come and remove your finances just like that. And you don't have power to hold up. And I'm going to come mess with your wife, kill her like this. So he has a power because there is no life to it. There is no essence of life to it. And we're trying to do like this in religion. Like we're going to take this one and put it in there like this. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be happy when I get a good job. Or I'm going to be happy when I have a BMW. I'm going to be very spiritual when I'm really singing to the Lord. You know, all these things are, it's all fake. How long you can put it like this? You know you come back tomorrow. Ain't no leaves coming out of this. Ain't no life coming out of this. You can't do this way. As long as I have insurance, I'm going to be all right. As long as I have a job, business, making money, social status, as long as my wife accepts me, my husband accepts me, as long as I'm good at the people, I'm tired of looking all. And we, we're trying to have a fake wine. And that's why he says, I am the true wine. And these are false wine. Anything that do not lead me to Jesus, you can't touch me. If you make that your high priority, you will be surprised. The books you read, the movies we watch, and we're going to filter like, you know, Lord, I don't want to be like this. And the Bible tells us, if you go back to the next verse, I'm just going to show this, and I'm, you know, 
John 15, verse 5, I highlighted the long last portion. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from Jesus, this tree has no life in it. You can't have a life in it. I mean, I'm sorry. You know, we have our own preconceived ideas from education, you know, from schools, from friends, from families. We, we hear them. We're like, well, when you do this, and you're going to be better. When you have this, you're going to be better. But I, I'm sorry to tell you from the word of God, nothing that will satisfy you. Go check on California, Los Angeles. People that have money going bizarre. You have, to, you have to be like a, you have to kind of like go back to take some medication to rethink about these people. Because it's a false line they're connected to thinking there's going to be life. Michael Jackson thought he would rule the world. He, would, he thought he would rule, live forever. He couldn't even finish his 60s. And you know the people that you can always picturize. The reason behind that is if there's no connection to the vine, this becomes withered. No life in it. No life in it. So point number one, we're taking notes. Being disconnected produces nothing. And I want to encourage you, we have a great resources here. We have a small groups. You can connect with the small group so you can grow as God is going to lead you. We have a life track right after this service though you can connect. You got to connect to life somewhere, hope to somewhere so that God can work through you. Because, you know, can I tell you something? It took 20 plus years to walk into a mess that you're in right now, I'm in right now. And it takes almost the equal amount of time to come out of that mess. But with Jesus, he can fast forward your past into future in a better way. When we connect to the life like this, look at this tree, it looks so beautiful and pretty because there's the roots in there. I know it's not a real tree though, you're looking, that's a real tree? No, it's not real, it's a fake tree, but for demonstration, you understand this, right? So look at that, that looks pretty, right? And if you put this between these two, you know which one has a life. You know which one doesn't. Because it's simple to understand, because the Bible says when we are connected to Jesus, there's a life coming in. Being disconnected produces nothing. Look at what Jesus said after this for this tree destiny. You know, every one of us have a destiny, right? We all have that tree as a destiny. This tree as a destiny. Watch this tree destiny. John 15, verse 6, he's saying, If you do not remain in me, and you are like a branch, like he's talking about this one, that is thrown away and withered. And this, is what, this was thrown away and withered. And he goes on to say, such a branch or picked up, somebody will pick it up and throw it into a fire and burn them all. And that's the destiny of this branch. I pray that you will not become this one. That's what I'm here to encourage you, educate you so we can be like that. He said, if you're not remaining me, if you go off and do whatever you want to do that makes you happy, that makes you feel like you're good, that makes you like I'm going to be, the, uh, you can't tell me. Your parents, like, you know, your parents are to tell you. You said, no, you can't tell me. I know better. You're, when, you're, when you're 22, you think you figured out everything. Wait until you turn 35, then you'll know. You know how you like when you're 22, you, you just figure it out, life. And you'll, you'll real, sooner or later you'll figure out, life ain't that easy. You know, my son told me when he was 15, I'm out of this house by 16. I'm going to get an apartment. I'm going to get a car. I'm going to get a good job. I'm, I'm, I'm. I said, you wait until you turn 16, my, my, my son. <laughs> He's 20. He's still with me. <laughs> it's easy to say a fake words because you have no experience where you're going. <laughs> and I don't mind my son staying with me as long as he's under my roof that I'm praying for him, watching over him, right? You know how that works. Keep the devils out of their lives. But anyway, so if you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withered. And I know you don't want to be this one. And the, the Lord himself says that it will be burned. And they will burn this thing completely off and you exist no more. Have you ever seen some people, they're born with a, such a great purpose and plan. At the end, they become a bozos. 
and bizarre ending. They have no destiny. Nobody talks about Michael Jackson today. Nobody talks about the people that, are, that have escalated in the culture. No value. You know why? There is no life to it. Life only comes from one person. His name is Jesus. Jesus did not say, I have the life. He said, I am the life. John 14, 16 said, I am the life. As long as you have I am, the life will begin to manifest. It doesn't matter what kind of marriage issues you have. It doesn't matter what kind of children you have. As long as you have a life, the life will begin to permeate into their people's life, into their marriage's life, and God will exalt your life. And you get the meaning of that life. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap. You get the meaning of life. He said, I've come to give you life, life to the fullest. You know, staying connected to him produces a fruit. The point number two that I want to labor with you. And you stay connected to him produces a fruit. So he goes on to say again, the same verse, I'm the wine, you're the branches. If you remain in me, I in you. And the way God is going to work with us to stay remaining is, is going to show us through the scripture. I'm going to show you. But I want to show you the fruit that you're going to have. And if you don't know what fruit you're going to produce, how are you going to plug into this God? Let me show you the fruit the Lord has put us together. One fruit has a nine ingredients, and I colored them up for you. It says the fruit of the Spirit. When you plug into Jesus, when we plug into church that flowing, that's connecting to the Lord, and plug into the you know, uh, ministries and small groups, he says, you will... You will have the fruit of the Spirit is love, number one, joy, number two, peace, number three, patience, number four, kindness, number five, goodness, number six, faithfulness, number seven, gentleness, number eight, and self-control, number nine. There are nine ingredients in one fruit. And God wants to let it manifest in you that peace, that joy that goodness, that faithfulness, all these wonderful things. So you saw this, it's like I like those fruits and I don't have a peaceful life. You're probably sitting here, man, I love the joy, but I don't think I have a joy in my life. I like that word goodness, I don't, I don't think I'm a good, good person. I, maybe you're looking like, man, I'm not self-controlled. I've been you know, abused and I'm watching stuff that I'm not be watching and the porn became my, I, I, you know, my uh, control, out of control, my heart and uh, alcoholism and drugs. You know, they, we all struggle with this area. And that's where God said, I'm going to give you the fruit that gives you self-control. You can control from what you don't want to be so you can become what you can be. So some of us may have a question like me. I had this question. How do I produce fruit and much fruit? Because Jesus said, you're going to produce fruit and much fruit. How do I produce this fruit and have a much fruit as well? I need to know so that I can start producing. And I have the scripture that I, you know, I was studying the scripture and God began to speak to my heart. Psalms 92, verse 11 to 15. If you look at it, I'm going to, I'm going to read the scriptures and I'm, I'm going to give you that how you can produce the fruit and much more fruit in your life and as well you that are watching here. And he goes on to say, uh, David is speaking here, my eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies. My ears have heard the defeat of my wicked opponents. The next word says, the righteous godly, in other words, will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar in Lebanon. And he goes on to say, planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of God. And verse 14 concludes, and 14 and 15 says, they will still bear fruit in old age. I love that one. And they will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. And he is my rock. There is no wickedness in him. See, that is the destiny of that individual that's going to produce a fruit and much more fruit. So if you go back to the verse 11, he said, my eyes have seen downfall of my enemies. So in other words, that God is telling us, in order for you to produce the fruit, you have to have a hope 
that your enemies are being destroyed every day of your life. It doesn't matter what enemy can threaten you. Those enemies are being destroyed, not because I preach on it, because Jesus died for those enemies to be destroyed. It doesn't matter what enemy is threatening your marriage, what enemy is threatening your personal life, what enemy is keeping you in a bandage, because Bible says Jesus overpower every principality, every powers of darkness. There's nothing that Jesus could not do. He healed the blind. He raised the dead and the sinful nature bend their knees before Jesus. Every enemy will bend their knees before God. Every enemy. Fear, depression, lack, intimidation, lack of going to the next level. Every single enemy will bend their knees before Christ. And the enemy of your soul is going to bend their knees before Christ based on your hope on Christ. You may be surrounded by enemies. And you're asking God, how come these enemies are not going? But God is asking, can you trust me above than your enemies? Can you have a faith on my life that my blood was shed for you? It doesn't matter what the enemy speaks to you. You have a boldness to declare that Jesus is alive in my life. I don't care your fear. You have no power over my life. I don't care your lack. You have no power over my life. Jesus is alive. Can we have that hope? And that's what he's saying. My eyes have seen the downfall of my enemies. How many of us have some enemies that are threatening you? Right? I'm not talking about people. Don't ever see that. God ever says, oh, so-and-so getting my last nerve. I'm going to. No, that's what I'm trying to tell you here. The enemy the Bible describes, they are spiritual enemies. The devil is one of them. He say his army is another one. Fear, lack, jealousy, intimidation, depression, headaches. All of them enemies that are trying to stop you from where you need to be going. And you got to see with the hope, you know, God... I see these enemies that are threatening you, but I'm going to trust on you. You're going to destroy every enemy of my soul. And that's what King David said. Can you become, King David become a superhero looking at this thing. He said, yo, you gave me a long, you can be as tall as a 12 or 20 feet. It doesn't matter. My God, deliver me from the lion. My God, deliver me from the bear. But you circumcise. Who do you think you are? Bring the best shot you can. I'm going to stand right here because my God is still alive. Alive. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, of all that I can ask or think. You better watch out, devil. My eyes will see downfall of my enemies. He says, my ears have heard the defeat of my wicked opponents. <laughs> you know, have you ever seen that it's a difference between weakness and wickedness? God forgives the weakness, but God doesn't forgive the wickedness. The wickedness is found in Leviticus 20, 17. When you go home, you can look at it. It says, if a man shall take his sister, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter, and see her nakedness, and she, is, she sees his nakedness, the Bible says it is wickedness. And we know that God created a sex for a reason, because it's a spiritual. God created that pleasure for a certain way, for certain boundaries to it. So in this particular thing that a man took his own sister and saw nakedness, that's a wicked thing. And that could be we sometimes see our own brothers are struggling. What do we do? Instead of praying for them, we expose them. Our own brothers, sisters are struggling. Instead of praying for them, covering them, we expose them. And Bible calls that's the wickedness. Have you ever seen somebody throw you under the bus even though you did right? That's wickedness. And even though you're believing right, you're following God, they, don't, they misunderstand you and they talked about you. They kind of put you out there. That's a wickedness. And God says, I will give you ears to hear that your wicked components will be defeated. 
It doesn't matter who's talking about you, who's going to be complaining about you, who's going to throw you under the bus. It doesn't matter who's exposing your weaknesses. Have you ever seen there's a person that committed suicide just because somebody put the person's, you know, uh, vulnerability on the Facebook, the person committed suicide. That is the wickedness. Because I trusted you, I gave you my personal information, that doesn't mean put me outside the block and, and put me condemnation. That is the wickedness. Because I trusted you, I told all my secrets to you. That doesn't mean I'm giving you permission to go put it out there. That's wickedness. Every time when I think about this wickedness, I have a story that I want to bring it to you. There's three preachers. They go play golf every, every weekend. And then one preacher says, man, I have a porn addiction. I know I'm preaching against that, but I don't know. I'm struggling with that. Y'all need to pray for me. Preacher number two says, hey, listen, I love, I don't have the porn addiction, but I think I have a problem with the money. I just want to have a good car, some nice houses. I'm just greedy. So these two preachers, they confess their sins. And the third preacher is looking at them. Man, you guys have some trouble here. I can't believe you're preaching the gospel being a fornicator, like a, a I don't even pronounce the word right, like a yeah, fornicator, I think, who watches a porn, and then stealer. You know what the third preacher said? I have a problem. I have a gossip problem. I can't wait to get out of here to tell everybody about y'all. And some of you are like that. And that's the wickedness. When somebody tells you their weakness, please keep them in your heart. Lock it up. And you tell, as long as I live, it will never come out of my mouth. It will grow with me in the grave because I trust God. He will deliver you from the weakness. He will deliver you from the weakness. He will bring you out of that. And that's what God is telling us to do as a people of God. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't gossip. Gossip is a wickedness. And God cannot tolerate. Let me tell you another story. I know, I love telling story. King David was escaping from Saul. Saul trying to kill him. You remember the story? And King David is hiding for his dear life. He said, God, protect me. And this one day, King David was just kind of praying and having his own time. The guy runs way back there with the cheering and shouting, yelling and screaming, yeah, we got this thing. He runs before David and said, David, Saul died. You know what King David said? Thank you for that good news. I want you to post on the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And they had that, by the way, back there. I don't know. <laughs> You know, it's great news. Now I can go home, watch NBA basketball playoff, eat some popcorn. I'm t- I don't have to be hiding. Is that what you think he said? You know what he said? How dare you bring an accusation news to me? He's the anointed man. You're telling me he's died and you're cheering up. And he killed the men of David, killed that man who brought the news of accusation or gossip. Imagine if Christians would protect like that. This is what, when somebody comes to talk about another pastor, I said, you ain't be coming into this church as a staff. You can visit. I want to hire people that talk about other pastors. We want to hire people that talk, because if you're talking about other pastors, you're definitely talking about me. So we don't hire people like that. Because you got to have the balance. You got you to have a life. Because Jesus said that, you know, truth is going to set you free. Because you live in a life that sometimes we want to even get the promotion to talk about somebody so we can get the promotion. And that's wickedness. And he says, in order for you to produce fruit, you have to hear God's word to overcome or defeat this wickedness that we all struggle godly way. And we all been struggle with this. And verse 13, he says... They that are planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of God. You know, you come to Sunday services. Are you serving God? Are you partake of this church? You know, pastor, I'm here. I can serve in life team. And I can sing. I can, you know, pastor youth. I can talk to children. We got a lot of people that's coming. They need help. He says, if you planted in the house of God. You know what planted means? It's like the tree. It doesn't matter what you say. I am moving from here. 
With all due respect, I'm not against people that change the churches like they change the cloth. I'm not against that. You're looking for a place where you can dwell. But if God tells you, this is the place, you better stick your guns out and put it right there. It doesn't matter who tells you, don't walk away and put yourself and be faithful to him. He can't change his mind every day. Well, two years later, God told me to leave. Who told you that? And we blame it on him because he's invisible. He can't defend himself, poor guy. And he's the same guy told you 2010, you be connected to the church. Now 2012, he'll tell you, leave the church. You know, I get tired of this baloney theology. When God told me, my son, you preach the gospel, hell, high water, come my way. People left me, people with me. It doesn't matter. I stick to myself because you said it. I don't care who's coming up with me. I don't care who's, I'm going to stay here until my last breath, until you remove me. And that's the tree. King David was planted as a king into that nation. Because God anointed him. He said, I am sold out for this nation. I'm serving you, God. And that's what King David says, planted, find a place. Today, we have a life track. I'm 301. We're going to give you three, you know, way to discover your gifts, your passion, your, 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 your abilities to serve God. And we're going to plug you in in the place where you can serve and flourish. Because he says, they were planted in the house of God. They flourish in the courts of God. You produce the fruit. The fruit is going to come on. It's going gonna, it's gonna to manifest on you. And I love the last one. You know, some of you are probably thinking, like, I'm too old for this. I'm retiring. You, this is all the younger people. Look at this. It says, they will still bear fruit in what? Old age. Because the fruit is inside of you. You are the one that looking around and see something is not right. You stepping up, you say, you know one thing? We need a help here. I'm going to take my step and help you because it doesn't matter what, oh, what, uh, how old I am. I'm going to be here helping you. They will still bear fruit in old age. And watch the word. They will stay fresh and green. They will stay fresh and green. I have a beautiful lady. She's 70 plus years. Emily, she's still looking great. And I asked her one day, what is the secret? Just pray for me so I will be like that. She said, only one thing is secret is I serve God. 70 plus years. You say, so 70 plus years, some people are in dialysis, they're, they're in the hospital, there's nothing wrong with the people. But when you make the right choices, Irrespective of your feelings. Feelings will come and go. One day you get a good day. One day you have a bad day. One day you have a pleasant day. One day you have a miserable. It doesn't matter. But my choice is I'm going to serve you, God. Wherever you put me, I'm going to serve. And God said, I'm going to make you. Have you ever seen the tree? Like tree, the storms come, it'll move, right? The tree, like a dry season comes, it's going to go down. And the tree will maybe moving, but the tree will never come out of the roots. The roots are plugged in. The roots are lined up in there. It doesn't matter what enemy tells me. It doesn't matter what people tells me I am plugged into there because that's where my life is I am the branches and Jesus is the vine I have to be plugged in in order for me to have a life and you will bear much fruit you will leave a legacy to next generation third generation you will you will so you that are don't know which church to go let me help you something this is how God helped me. <laughs> I used to go to Cornerstone Church. My wife and I, and then uh, and the Lord told me, I want you to just go for another church and look to see another church. So, you know, I, I'm one of those. I don't just go to church. I call my close friends. I said, listen, I'm looking for a church, and I want to nurture, nourish. Can you tell me a church? They told me the name. I went there, right? And this is how God does it. God knows how to speak to you. you know? If he knows how to talk to a donkey, he'll talk to you, right? Yeah, he does. He, he really talked to donkeys. By the way, if you have a dog or cat, he'll talk to dog, cat too. You know, he'll, he'll talk to you. I was sitting in the church listening. I haven't even heard him. Lord, tell me if this is the church. No, I didn't say nothing. I'm just worshiping. I'm listening the word. I can hear from here. I want you to serve this church the best of you now. And that day, when he speaks to me, I know he spoke to me. 
I'm not one of those, I changed the words on God. Well, you told me, well, today I don't feel good, I'm not going to be serving, <laughs> you know. I don't even know who this church are, the pastor, nothing, all of them, I have no idea. So I went to after service, I signed up, I didn't even talk to my wife, because I'm the priest, I make a decision, you know. You know you, let me tell you, if your wife making decision for you, for spiritual aspect, you're in the wrong place, dude. You follow your husband, if your wife's. And come to United. My wife wanted a cornerstone. I said, sweetheart, this is where the Lord is telling me to go. And uh, end of the day, we made a decision. You're going to cornerstone? She's like, yeah. Well, I'm going to this church. Two weeks. We're in two different churches. Doesn't matter. If I'm really heard from God, he has to speak to her, right? Right? I said, Lord, you spoke to me. Now you're going to speak to her. I'm going to be faithful what you told me. I'm going to plug in here. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to serve them. And three weeks later, she said, got up, dressed up. She's like, I said, where are you going? We're going with you. And me and my son, my wife, every, all of them, we served there five years until the church was birthed into I never left the church. I served them in the media. I served them children's ministry. I cleaned the bath. You name it. You want me to lick the carpet? I lick the carpet for Jesus' name's sake. I'll do it because that's the commitment that I have. When God speaks something, I'm not going to change my mind because I am connected to the vine. And that's why God do a blessing over your life because you have a legacy that you have been faithful in the small. So God can elevate you big things and God can trust you big things so he can serve you. So if you're here, if God is telling you, man, I like that Indian preacher. He's funny. He's serious. I don't understand all his accent. But God is telling me to stick around here. You better stick around here because God is right now telling you. Don't look at me like I'm uh, like some kind of grace. You can laugh though. But some of you are like, should I laugh? <laughs> no, you can laugh. That's all right. But I'm telling you how God works. Make yourself. For your own benefit, people, not for me. When you connect to the wine, you will bear much fruit. You may not see the fruit right away. Have you ever seen that the fruit comes out of the branch, not out of the vine? The branch produces the fruit. And the way it produces the fruit, there's a seasons. Not every day. God will produce a fruit through you, a season. And sometimes we quit before the season comes. Sometimes we walk away before season manifests. Imagine the branch is telling to the wine, I don't know when the fruit is coming. The wine says, shut up and plug in. Because I know when the fruit is coming because I'm the wine. And the branch is looking at the wine, okay Lord, I'll plug in. And in due time, the wine produces the fruit and much fruit. So there are four things that I want to give you based on this scripture. Downfall of your enemies. When you have a hope that every enemy of your soul is falling daily, you're bringing a fruit. Number two, when you hear the word of God that can, you can defeat the wicked components that are being threatening your life, exposing your weaknesses and people that are talking. Can I tell you one thing? There's one person that exposes your weakness. His name is Satan. He's the one accuser of brethren. He's the one constantly talking. You blink at a blink. You're good for nothing. Look at you what you did. Look at you what you've been watching. Look at what you've been thinking. Look at all this is the enemy. God will never say when God shows up. This is how he says, son, come here. Daughter, come here. Let me give you a hug. Let me, let me love you. In the, port of, in the particle son, he came back expecting father to speak to him. But the father did not speak to particle son. He said, come, come here, come. I'm going to have a celebration with you. I'm not here to talk about what you have done. I'm not here to tell you how mistakes you did. I'm here to love you, extend my grace to you, extend my favor to you. Because you're still my son when you're watching that thing. You're still my son when you're stealing that thing. You still my son when you sleep around. I have never left you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. It doesn't matter who leaves you, forsake you. I will embrace you. That's the God we serve. If you, if you serve that God, come on, let's give him a big hand clap. I serve that God. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. I was a stealer. Not a Pittsburgh stealer, though. I was really a stealer, stealing from my mom's wallet, my dad's wallet, stealing from my friends. I was a thief, murderer, 
I would beat my brother like crazy until he begs me, please leave me. And I still kick him. And Jesus said, when you, when you have thoughts towards your brother, killing thoughts, you committed murder. I was uh, all those things. But he takes a murderer. He takes a thief. Makes somebody. And I'm here. You think I'm a perfect guy? I'm not. I am a more dumber than you are. But in God, I'm more than a conqueror. Because I choose to plug in with him. So three things in order for you to produce more fruit in a New Testament methodology, methodology. First Corinthians 13, 13 says, these three things remain forever. And these three, three things remain everlasting. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of this is love. When you love God, my friend, more than your wife, your marriage is going to be okay. When you love God more than your job, your finances is going to be okay. When you love God more than your parents, your future is going to be okay. Are we loving him to plug into the wine so that I can produce the fruit? It's time for you to make a decision. You're going to, you know, I don't know what, where you are. I don't know. Maybe you're like the branch trying to fill in into the buckets. But now God is asking, can you connect it? To it? So how do we stay connected to the wine? And this is my last scripture. John 15, 10 says, If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. I want you to know one thing. When God speaks to you something, He doesn't change it. If God tells you to do something, He's not going to change you. He's going to promote you. He's going to elevate you. He's going to disposition you for the greater glory. But He never come back and change what He told you. That definitely not God, my friend. Maybe you heard from your spirit. Not from God. If God says, he said, if you keep my commandments, if you hear from me to plug into CJC life, to plug into small groups, if you hear from me and you keep my commandments, then you are connected to wine. This is the body of Christ. He is the head. We are the body. And as we connect it to one another, there's a life that comes from the roots. Do you know this tree has a two lives? One life is a public life. Another life is a private life. A lot of people think your public life is a success. No, it is because of the private life. It is makes the public life success. The reason you're shining, not because who you are outside. The reason you're shining, because who you are inside. But your inside is plugged into right source. Now the outside will begin to come out. You're going to have a good habits, good belief system, good lifestyle, good structure, good way of thinking because you plugged into something that's invisibly source of life that God is giving and the kingdom of God is within us my friend greater we see that's he that's inside of us he's inside he's ready to manifest through you but you are the one ready to make a decision today you that are watching if God call you to be online church and you hear and God is speaking to you and you need to make a decision with all due respect you need to make a decision plugged into wine so there's a fruit that's coming just for you. If you can bow your heads today, I'm done. If you can bow your heads today. He's expressing his love to you, my friend. He's telling you right now, this is your season. Some of you hear that you're confused. You don't know what direction you're going. You heard about churches. You heard about preachers. You don't have a confidence on preachers. You don't have a confidence on church. You think they're all about money. But my friend, there are some true churches that really minister the Holy Spirit. God will speak to you, my son, my daughter, my brother, my sister. If you can allow God to talk to you, He'll talk to you. It's not about religion. It is about the life that comes from heaven. When you plug into the life, God will begin to show the fruit God will begin to elevate you into an amazing place that there is a life on this earth that is so powerful, so exciting, so peaceful, so wonderful that man hasn't tapped into. The moment when we dwell in that wine, 
will begin to experience the true authentic you know he doesn't god doesn't really you know what it about how much we preach how much we proclaim how long we pray but it's one thing that he is longing to see in us when son of man comes back can he find faith on this earth the one thing that he's asking can you be faithful where god put you when you go before god he's not going to ask you my friend you have done so great things he said well done my faithful servant i put you there but you served faithfully i ask you to do you did faithfully and that's what i long for every day of my life when i see the king of glory when i see my god i want to hear philip you are a faithful servant you did it what i have called you and i want to be that and i pray the same grace upon every people every person that's here everyone that is listening everyone that are watching i pray that that you will one day stand before my king who is the ultimate judge who is the ultimate father when we stand before him our knees buckle and you can't even speak only he can speak the glory will be so strong awesome and you will love to hear this words my friend good and faithful if you marry to your wife i urge you i pray be faithful to her don't look around it's not worth it it's not worth it talk to the people that got married three four times it's not worth it there is a great reward when you are faithful to your loved ones be faithful to them and god will elevate you god will reward you if god call you to this church or any church be faithful to the church be faithful to the pastor be faithful to the team and don't let the enemy persuade you with the false doctrine and plug into a vine where there's a life that's going to come and in due season my son my daughter my friend my beloved you will produce that fruit and god will elevate you and god will bless you and god will expand your life in a great measure like never before and here i am i pray that your god's blessings will begin to come upon you but before i'm going to pray i want to ask you if you one of those and you be in that dry branch thrown away by people by churches maybe you got hurt by the church maybe you did not like sort of church maybe you're here now you're ready to plug into the vine because you're feeling God is calling you and you be you feeling that you is time for you to connect it to that vine so you can produce the fruit and maybe you walked away from God now you want to rededicate if you are that one if you're watching you can chat with us our team will respond to you but if you're here can I see your hand so I can pray for you thank you anybody else thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you sir anybody else thank you thank you sir if you're ready to plug in plug into that wine so that he can produce fruit maybe you're here that you do not know lord jesus christ you went to church now you heard the message you probably enjoyed maybe you didn't maybe you feel something peaceful now you're ready to give your life to christ and you're ready to surrender to this great lord who's going to lead us and he wanted me to pray for you can I see your hand so I can pray anybody else here that's right thank you thank you ma'am thank you sir thank you sir god bless you god will use you greatly thank you thank you sir god will bless you god will use you greatly god will definitely empower you thank you sir thank you sir god will thank you ma'am thank you ma'am god will bless you god will empower you god will lead you anybody else thank you if you can bow your heads just whisper this words with me if you can you're not talking to me you're talking to god you're talking to our lord jesus christ say out lord lord jesus yes lord i am a sinner i made mistakes in my life i walked away from you i'm not, now i'm asking you to come into my heart be my lord and savior lead me god in your truth lord that i will serve you rest of my life i thank you for your grace in jesus name amen amen come on let's give the lord a hand clap if you can thank you so much i pray i pray god's blessings over you those that are watching and they that are here i pray god's blessing and you plugged into wine and if you're here today if god is calling you to be part of this church and you feel like this is where the lord is calling you to dwell in 
please talk to Sharon. Sharon will be here at the end of the service or on the way if you're guests with us as you're walking out. We have our life team members there. Please talk to them and they will plug you in right away. They will connect with you and they'll give you what is your next step. If you received our Lord today, every first Sunday we give a baptism here, water baptism. Your next step is my friend, get baptized, connected with the Lord so that you can serve God and you can get excited with God. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord another one if we can. Bless his name. Bless his name.